Hello and welcome to my senior year fellows project. My name is Megan Owen and for the past 12 months I have been participating in documenting the restoration of a 1962 Jaguar Mark II. The car came to us from California with no brakes, a non-running engine, a very tired interior, and many parts that were just worn out. The reason for buying a California car is that the car has little to no rust. This means that the restoration is mechanical and cosmetic only. I've broken up the restoration into four episodes, the engine, the suspension, the engine bay, and interior and paint. This video focuses on the front and rear suspension. The start of the suspension rebuild involves the removal of the front suspension. This is done by removing the complete front subframe. Because of the weight of the assembly, this was a multi-person job that resulted in the complete front suspension being removed from the car. As you can see, the front suspension is very dirty, as it had been sitting under an engine that had leaked oil for nearly all of its life. Reconditioning the suspension involved taking off all of the steering, suspension, and brake parts, and then cleaning and painting and rebuilding it back up again. The suspension springs were somewhat nerve-wracking to remove because they are under intense pressure, but with a series of clamps, they were removed without injury. Once the dismantling and cleaning was complete, the old suspension bushings were pushed out using a clamp or hydraulic press. This was followed by respraying all of the parts in a nice shiny coat of black paint. the new bushes were pressed into each part and the reassembly could start. It started with the top wishbone and then the steering ball joints were replaced. The bottom one can be rebuilt but the top one was replaced with a new unit. This was bolted into the lower wishbone and then the stub axle carrier could be bolted on. Once all of this was done, the springs could be recompressed back into the unit. Compressing the springs was another nerve wracking task, but it was successfully completed. All of the steering joints in the steering box were reconditioned and reassembled. The steering geometry was loosely put together as this would be adjusted once everything was back into the car. Like the removal, the installation of the reconditioned subframe was another multi-person job that involved positioning the suspension under the car and then lowering the car into the subframe. Once complete, the front subframe looked fantastic. The next job was reconditioning the brakes. The Jaguar Mark II has all around disc brakes, which is very unusual for a car of the early 60s. Although, by today's standards, the discs are extremely small. Each caliper has a removable piston and a removable compression chamber, and these were reassembled to be ready for painting. The next thing to take apart was the servo, and as you can see, there was liquid in the servo, which should not have been there, which indicated that the servo had failed at some point. The servo is an intricate piece that we had to revert to the manual to know how everything went back together. But as you can see, we were able to reassemble a servo with new seals to prevent the loss of fluid. 
Assembling the vacuum chamber of the servo required both of us in order to compress the massive spring that the servo uses to push the brake activation cylinder. Once the servo was back together, we were back into reassembling the front brake calipers, having painted them and installed new seals and pads. The discs and the front hub bearings were removed and new bearings were pressed in and new discs were added and new seals were pushed into the hub. The calipers were then reinstalled, providing us with a very nice shiny new set of front brakes. The rear suspension also required a complete overhaul. The Mark II is the last Jaguar that had a live axle rear suspension, which consists of two inverted leaf springs that are mounted under the rear seats of the car. Once the axle was removed, it was cleaned, new suspension bushes were installed and reassembled. Also, the rear brakes were taken apart, cleaned, and put back together. Once the rear suspension was cleaned, painted, and put back together, it could be reinstalled back into the car. It took a lot of time and required the use of blocks and jacks to help put the rear suspension back in place. So after many weeks of dismantling, cleaning, rebushing, painting, and reinstallation, the car finally had a beautiful suspension and working brakes. Even though from the outside the car doesn't look much different, we know that when the time comes to take it out on the road, it will handle and stop in the same way as it did when it left the showroom nearly 60 years ago. Thank you for watching.